Are you tired of losing to Ruby Amethyst? Sometimes Amber Steel can just run away with the game and you're left there with this look on your face. Well, I got the deck for you guys because this deck beats Ruby Amethyst. And unfortunately, it just doesn't beat Amber Steel because Amber Steel's too good. But check the deck out anyways. Yo, welcome back to the channel, everybody. It is Manticore. You're in the Manticore's Tavern. And we have, I wouldn't say a new deck, but it's definitely a deck that is seeing a lot more play lately because I seen it uh, play a tournament and then beat three Ruby Amethysts. So this deck is actually very good against that. And this deck is actually pretty good against most decks. I don't think there's any other decks that it struggles against. I would say it kind of struggles against Emerald a little bit because Elsa can't deep freeze that Cusco uh, because of the ward. But this deck in particular, you know, Sapphire Amethyst can really put up a good game against everything except Amber Steel. Amber Steel, we all know that deck is just about tier zero at this point. You know, once they get those uh, Simbas, the, the Simba Future Kings, the Lilos, the Lefus, and all that in play, it's just really hard to come back from that unless you have mass removal. And that's something that this deck does not have. You know, when you're playing against Amber Steel, uh, you really want to you rely on your grab your swords a lot to put that heavy damage on a bunch of your opponent's characters that they have in play. You also have the be prepared if you're playing Ruby because it just gets rid of the entire board. But this deck here in particular does not have that capability. What this deck relies on is mid-range control. So it's definitely not tempo. It's definitely not aggro in my opinion. Definitely, definitely mid-range control because once it gets to that mid-game, you are using those let it goes to sing with other cards that you have in play to be able to use it for free and put a card that is a threat in your opponent's inkwell face down immediately. We have the Elsas to be able to deep freeze them and keep them out of play for two whole turns, essentially. We have the Hades to also use it just at like a let it go and get rid of something as well. We have the Ursulas to take uh, lore away. And then once we're up there and we're using all these things in mid-range, in the mid-game and late game, we also have the all these cards that can quest for three. Like we have the Maleficents here, Mufasas, the Chief Tuis, the Ursulas, Elsas. They can all quest for three. So this deck, mid-range, it's hard. If you can't stop them, if your opponent can't stop you from controlling the game and you're getting these characters in play, it's hard to, to be able to maintain the win. So getting right into the deck list here, we do have the Archimedes and Flounders here. We're playing a combination of six totals. So you can play three Archimedes, three Flounders, uh, you know, or you could play four Archimedes and two Flounders, whatever. Just basically a combination of any six cards for two, two, one drop inkables is what you need. Um, we do have the Phils here because he is a three, one, which is good against, uh, say, Rafiki's or those Simba bodyguards. Um, so he gets rid of those easily, and he is also a support so that in, in case he does need to quest, uh, you can give, you know, that three that three strength to your flounders and make them a 5-2 or give them to, you know, this Mufasa and give make him a 7-6, you know, something like that. So that, there's that. Maleficent's for draw, the Mickey's for the ramp, the bell for the ramp as well. A lot of people are only worried about her second ability, but everybody needs to realize that she also has a first ability that's called read a book. You can put an additional card in your inkwell when she's in play and it's not something that you have to exert for as soon as you put her in play during your turn you can put an additional card in your inkwell so that's two inks in one turn it's too good to get to your 10 and then once you get to your 10 then you can start writing about her first ability her second ability and questing for five which is absolutely disgusting we have the queen here for draws the maleficence because she's a three six so she basically survives two challenges for the most part um, in most in many situations and she quests for three Mufasa also quests for three with six will power He's gonna be able to survive many challenges as well The Ursula is here for control to take a lore away when you put her in play and she survives forever Everybody knows this because everybody encountered her with Ruby Amethyst But she works well in this deck too for the control uh, variation of this deck and she quests for three as well Chief Tui Moana's good old Pappy right here. He also quests for three and then uh, we have Hades the only thing that's a five drop, you know, other than the, the queen here that doesn't quest for three in our deck, but his obvious ability is that he can put a call, chosen character face down the inkwell, and that's too good. So that's fine. If he was a three, if he could quest for three, that'd be absolutely busted. Um, but he's there because obviously control. Elsa, deep freeze, control, quest for three. Friends on the other side because you can sing with the Maleficence and Mickey Mouse detectives to be able to get those Elsas and those Hades into your hand whenever you need them to let it go for control and putting things in the inkwell. And then I have fates for pressure on our opponent. Um, again, guys, this deck is phenomenal. I'd say that the only thing it does struggle against is Amber Steel 
and maybe some variations of Emerald because Cusco cannot be chosen with Hades' ability, Let It Go, Elsa, and stuff like that. But let's get into some games and let's see what this deck can actually do. All right. So we're not going to need the Elsas for sure. We keep maybe not even that Maleficent. We could probably keep one Flounder. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of one just to see what else I can get. Yeah, see, there we go. This is a little bit better, I think. We draw into another Maleficent. We draw into uh, the Eye of Fates that we can ink here. We got some stuff to go off of. Um, so this Maleficent is going to be a little too important later on. So I think that we're going to have to get rid of this here. And then we're just going to play a Flounder. We probably could have just played without inking anything. Or without putting anything in play. But... Uh, think that we need to try to have some sort of pressure on these Lilos that he's going to have in play. Now, I'm not entirely sure how this deck plays against any Amber variant at all. All I know is that this deck performs very well against Ruby Amethyst. He's going to go ahead and quest with there. So he's playing Amber Ruby, which is a very, very, very good deck. And Amber Ruby kind of plays a little similar to how Ruby Amethyst plays. So... We're going to play this out and see what it can actually do. Um, let's actually go ahead and just get rid of this Maleficent. I feel like the bells may be a little bit better, actually. So let's just go ahead and do this. And then play into that Lilo. Um, and this Phil is going to be able to take out a Simba. If he's playing the Simba variant. But he may not even be playing that. From what I understand... Amber Ruby, the next three drop, he could be playing Mickey, the double quest Mickey. That's a 3-3. Three, three. Um, I think that's realistically the only three drop that I can think of that plays that. I think that many of the deck variants play twos, skip threes, and then the fours that they play are Rapunzel's and the Ariel on Human Legs. So there's that. And we have an Elsa here. We can actually probably get rid of one bell. I want to go ahead and play the Maleficent and friends on the other side. Because I want to start seeing my Mickeys to start trying to ramp as quickly as possible. And that's not going to be there. We can go ahead and quest here. If he goes ahead and... We're not going to do that. If he goes ahead and challenges it with that baby LeFou, it's going to go ahead and get knocked out. Which will be fine. And he's playing Ariel. Oh, that's a... How do I not remember the aerial as a three drop? Of course it's a three. Well, mine that I've seen, like Duckies and Steadfast and the ones that I've built, we don't play aerial. This aerial, we don't play the Spectacular Singer aerial. Because you're not playing a song deck for, for the most part. Let's go ahead and get rid of this here. Play another Maleficent. I'm going to draw. And then we can actually go ahead and sing. Friends on the other side right here and then we can just quest here and then we just now we can cancel so turn five i think that the thing he's going to want to do is put in no okay i was gonna say probably put in um maui but he's playing the aerial song mulan version and here we can actually do I want to keep the Maleficent? I feel like maybe I want to keep that Maleficent. Put the Queen out. We can actually just go ahead and do Let It Go on Milan. I don't I don't know. Maybe Ariel, but Milan's a 4-5. And that 5 is going to suck. And then we can just play Sing This with the Maleficent. Draw some cards quest here and pass so now look like my hand resource is far above what my opponent's is and this is similar to how they would be playing with the ruby amethyst you know we're in turn five um they're not really going to have much going they could have a mufasa in play or they could have not mufasa they're aladdin potentially um not what i'm thinking I don't, I'm, I'm confusing myself because i saw my own mufasa um they could have their maui in play in turn five and that maui actually kind of sucks but with this particular deck we're looking at um, some pretty good things that we got going here. I'm like, everything's pretty strong. They can all quest for quite a bit. 
Uh, I think I might keep the bell. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and keep bell. And then with that ability, we can actually probably put... Chief Tui. And... I'm going to go ahead and go with Maleficent here. In the Inkwell. We can play Phil. And we're going to play Phil specifically for his support ability here. So in case he decides to go ahead and go with a... Well, he can't even go into Big Aladdin here. Um, And it looks like my opponent's honestly just stalling here. I don't know if they're going to do anything. They may just end up quitting... Or just letting time run out and having it pass to my turn. I don't know. See, he does do something. So he does go ahead and ink there, and then we're just going to have to let it let it be. Um, he inks one. He could go for a be prepared next turn, so I'm not really worried about doing anything there. Uh, let's go ahead and just go with, like, Eye of Fates and just quest for a bunch. We can probably keep Mufasa because... We're at seven already. Um, he can probably play Be Prepared next turn. And if he does that, then, you know, we're not in a good position. But we do have Elsa and an inkable card, which is going to be just fine for us. So let's go ahead and just quest a bunch here. I could try to get my bell to 10. But that's just not a thing that's going to happen this turn. Let's see. Probably going to stall some more again. Um, he's only got two cards in hand. How great can they be? He's got Shield of Virtue. He's playing one. Um, if he draws in, he drew into a Maui, maybe he could play that. He does that. It's fine. He's going to ready that aerial. So I can't do anything to it. He's probably going to quest with the Aladdin. Not questing with the Aladdin. Okay. Um, to be honest, let's just go ahead and do this. We're just going to quest a bunch. Uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and go with that, and quest, quest, quest. Oh, no, I forgot to use my Eye of Fates. No! No! Could have got me to 13. Fine. Mm. I don't think I would have turn game next turn anyways, but... Because if he if I had to 13, Bell can quest for five if I happen to get 10 in there. You know, like if I went to ink this one next turn, ink another one if I draw into an inkable. They could get to five, but then I could only quest to 18. And if I was able to quest 18, he more than likely would use like the Aladdin and the Maleficent to challenge and get rid of at least two of my characters. And then I wouldn't be able to quest for the game in that sense. But he can probably go Ariel and Aladdin into my Bell. I'm not sure if that's what he wants to do. He's going to quest with the area. Probably play Be Prepared here. And there it is. And yeah. So now we can just... I'd rather play the Mufasa right now. And just pass. He's top decking here. I don't think he's got anything for game. I mean, he could maybe draw into... If he draws into like an... Well, no, he's not going to have that. He concedes. All right. Um... I hope we play against Ruby Amethyst here. We don't need the Hades just yet. We don't need Mufasa. I don't think that we need this Maleficent either. The Maleficent's great, but I don't think that we're going to hold on to it. I'm going to hold on to Maleficent and Mickey uh, for Friends of the Other Side songs. We can hold on to Belle because she's going to be able to uh, put extra cards in our inkwell as quickly as possible. And we're not playing against a Ruby Amethyst here. We could be playing against... Sapphire Amethyst, potentially. Um, let's go ahead and just get rid of this Eye of Fates, because we don't need it. And we'll just put our own Flounder in play. He's just going to go ahead and quest. Alright, so we only know that he's still playing Sapphire. Unfortunately, we don't have any more 2-drops. Um... Let's go with Mufasa. Next turn, if we have to, I'll probably ink the 
bell. Um, we're not going to challenge with the flounder. We're just going to keep him readied. I want to bait out the quest for the Aurora. Because if I don't get rid of that Aurora ASAP, he's going to run away with the lure. <clears throat> okay, so we get the Cheshire Cats. So we're playing Sapphire, Emerald Sapphire. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of one of these. Put... I hate, honestly, putting Mickey in right now because he's only a 1-3. I feel like putting in Maleficent is a little bit better of an option. And then we just use this Flounder to challenge the Aurora. And now we can pass. We need to be able to get rid of that Cheshire Quack. <laughs> Cheshire Quack? The Cheshire Cat as quickly as possible. Um, see, like, like I said, he's already running away with the lore. I don't know if we're going to be able to catch up. Mm. Now we can just straight challenge into the flounder, but I don't know if that's going to be a right choice for us here. Um, let's go ahead and put this Mickey in play. Use that. Uh... Maybe we do this. And then sing. Friends on the other side. Yeah. We have a decent hand. I need to ramp a little bit quicker. We can get to seven next turn. And put Mickey in play. But that's not going to be enough to really slow him down very much. And they're down to two cards, so that's good. Like, it's good. That's good. Um, maybe not playing Mickey right now. Now that we draw, drew into Let It Go, we can actually get rid of the Tinkerbell and then challenge, challenge with Maleficent and Mickey. And then go from there. So let's go ahead and get rid of the Queen. I would love to be able to sing this, but I don't think we're going to be able to sing it anytime soon. We're going to have to go with Let It Go on Tinkerbell. Um, and then probably Challenge Challenge. Um, yes, Challenge here, and then Challenge here. I would rather keep my Maleficent in play than the Mickey. I know Mickey's a 1-3, but if he challenges with the Flounder, it's going to stay alive regardless. And I want to make sure that if he does challenge with the Flounder, I can at least trade with Maleficent. So he goes straight into another Cheshire Cat. So we can go into 7 here. Um... Let's go with... Honestly, we have a, we have good enough cards in our hand that we probably don't need to play friends on the other side anymore. Let's go with that. And then... Hades, because we aren't sure if they're going to draw into a Cusco and Cusco can't target or can't choose the... Or Hades can't choose the Cusco if that comes up in play. Um, and then we're just going to go ahead and challenge the Flounder, get rid of it. Next turn, we're going to have the Hades in play, as well as potentially an Ursula or an Elsa, which will be great for us. Um, we have nothing to ink here, but we're fine. Let's just go ahead and get... Ursula in play. <clears throat> Make him lose one, and then we draw into another Elsa, so that's good. So now we've got two Elsas that we can play off of. We also have the Mickey to get us into another ink when necessary. There is the Cusco, like I said. So now we have to make sure that we are playing very well here. And then we can just quest. He's going to get to 13 with Cusco. But we're going to be able to challenge and get rid of it. 
Oh, he gets he plays Earth. Oh man, that's unfortunate. Um. So now, hmm. Let's see. We can go Mufasa. So he can sing, and then quest. Um and quest with Mickey. So we're catching up here, but the Cusco is tough. If he plays another Cusco, it's going to be very difficult. He plays Genie. That's fine. I think that should be okay. Um, let's play... Let's ink one of these Let It Goes. Um, and then we'll just play into Mufasa. No. We have to sing. We can sing Let It Go. We can just put Elsa in play, though. No. We can play the Mufasa and then sing Let It Go. Put the genie away. And then we can quest and quest. So now, if he doesn't get rid of my bell next turn, he's going to lose. Um, yeah, he has to get rid of the bell. He plays his own Maleficent. Okay. Okay. And then, yeah, now we're just going to quest for game and win. Well, there that is. Oh, that was a ranked game. Whatever. All right, we go first this time. Um, I would like to play against Ruby Amethyst to show you guys how effectively this deck can counter that deck. But we're going to go ahead and start with our mulligan before we run out of time here. We're going to get rid of the Ursula, the Hades, um, and we can maybe get rid of the Queen here. I don't feel like she's going to be too useful. I feel like maybe we want to see something a little bit different. We get a Flounder, Flounder, and Phil. Um, I'll tell you what, it's not the best. Um, probably, I don't think I really want to value the Eye of Fates right now this early. If I draw into another one late game, mid to late game, that'll be okay. But I want to make sure I have the characters to play rather than playing into items, um, coming up into the mid game here. Because it is also a four cost, so you're never going to get it down until mid game anyways. So we're playing Emerald something not ruby amethyst like i want it to be but we're playing ruby emerald so this deck does perform quite well against J ruby in general so let's see what we can do with that we get into an ursula um unfortunately i feel like maleficent's probably gonna be the thing that we get rid of here do i want to play into archimedes like do i want to hold on to these in my hand Uh, we'll go ahead and play the Archimedes, because I feel like this deck is more control-based, so we just want to make sure we're getting rid of the characters he's putting in play. If he puts Flynn Rider in play, we want to make sure we get rid of that. Uh, if he puts Cruella, I think Cruella's a 1-3 though, so. The Aladdin, I don't know, I've seen a lot of people playing that green Aladdin in here for, in Emerald-based decks for some reason. Yeah, he's got Ward, but I don't know, I just feel like it's lackluster in my opinion. And he's going to quest with the tubs. All right. So now we have. We'll go ahead and get, get, get rid of Phil, Phil. Or not Phil. Flounder. Um, we can keep Phil just in case they get into like a. Um, a Cheshire Cat. We're going to go ahead and get rid of that. Let's go ahead and challenge this here. Get rid of it. And we're just going to go ahead and quest. For one, and we have to make sure we're challenging and getting rid of those early cards because if we don't, they're going to catch up or they're going to get way ahead of us. 
in the I would say prize race because of Pokemon, but in in, in the lore race. Ruby Emerald, so he's probably playing evasives, I would imagine. Do they have a three drop evasive Peter Pan? Yeah, there it is. Yep. Um we can actually go ahead and get rid of Phil here, I think, and probably play this queen, and he's gonna concede. I wonder why he conceded. Weird. Well, there it is. This deck has got the muscles like me. <sighs> yes. This deck's actually pretty decent. Luckily, I didn't play against any Amber Steel because let's face it, that deck is good, and I keep saying it because it's just it's hard to beat that deck when they go wide. And uh this deck also is able to beat Emerald, so obviously it doesn't have too much trouble with Emerald, um, but you know it can. Uh Amethyst Sapphire is good. It's definitely come up. I'm seeing it being played a lot. I think it's worth looking into. It is probably on the pricier side if you're trying to build it IRL because Ursula's aren't cheap. Hades aren't cheap. Elsa's aren't cheap. Let It Go's aren't cheap. Um, so I do think that this deck is a little bit more on the expensive side. But if you want to test it out, go ahead and try it in Pixelborn first before you make any decisions. The deck performs exceptionally well against Ruby Amethyst. I know I didn't have any Ruby Amethyst games to showcase to you guys, but this deck... Um, I first saw it actually whenever I was browsing the Luxury Lorcana Tournament's Facebook group page, and I saw that in one of the tournaments that they had, this was the only deck that was not Ruby Amethyst, and it beat all of those Ruby Amethyst decks. So this deck is very clearly a counter to that. Um, and it's, I mean, guys, the deck is just decent. The deck's fun, actually. I like the deck a lot, too, and you guys can't go wrong with it. But that's going to be it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment down below y'all's thoughts. Uh, maybe some decks that you guys want me to play. Um, and I'm actually going to start running some Lorcana tournaments uh, via Pixelborn on Limitless TCG. So if you guys are interested in that, check it out. Um, I'm trying to make my first tournament only lo uh, local and with like close friends. But um, after I get a handle on how to control the tournaments on Limitless TCG, I will open them up to the public. And I actually have some cool play mats that are being designed by a local player here and uh i really appreciate i really appreciate her work but that's gonna be it guys again don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video peace that was so lame